Hello, my name is Allison Warner and I am the Chief Editor of Orthodontic Products. In our April and May issue, we profiled Dr. Mark McGinnis, an orthodontist practicing in Clemson, South Carolina. In the last two years, Dr. McGinnis has fully embraced 3D printing in his practice and with that move to produce in-office aligners. I wanted to talk to Dr. McGinnis today to give you further insight into his experience. Dr. McGinnis, thank you for joining me. Thanks, thanks for having me. Great. Well, let's get started. Right now, we're in the middle of the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, your office has been closed for the last six weeks. What's been going on with you and Upstate Orthodontics? Well, um, in at the end of March, we closed for about two weeks, and I kept my staff on at that point in time. We had uh, about 50 aligner cases kind of in the pipeline. Um, so we used that time to go ahead and manufacture the rest of those aligners. We opened up, uh, we were not mandated to close. It was a voluntary thing kind of in our state. Um, but uh, we opened up for the first and the first two days, the first and second of April and delivered those 50 cases and then shut down for the rest of the month. And we're gonna start seeing patients on May 4th, which will be next Monday. Um, but we used that time to kind of get caught up. Um, and then after that was done, we had a month, um, got to spend some quality time with my family. <laughs> when my daughter was home from college, she was, um, you know, uh, she's a freshman at, at the University of Georgia. So she was home. So we spent some quality time together. And then, uh, you know, after a few weeks, you know, you, you get kind of stir crazy. And, and I um, was, uh, you know, kind of complaining about not having, um, something uh, to do and then a tornado roll through and, and damage my cynical location and so for the past couple of weeks I've had plenty to do <laughs> so uh, <laughs> we've been kind of dealing with the aftermath and as of yet we still don't have power over there and we've been doing demos so uh, my but luckily it was not my um, uh, my Clemson office a Seneca location um, uh, I had been wanting to remodel it anyway so it's I'm gonna use this as a positive instead of a negative and, and uh, we're gonna get that uh, get up to speed but we're gonna you luckily for me I had a second location where I can still take care of my patients and so uh, the stress level of of having to try to get up and running um, I, I it would be horrible if um, if I didn't have another place where I can see those patients so. yeah well, in terms of getting, you, you are going to open in the next couple of days. Um, what have you been doing to get ready or what kind of changes have you made? Well, um, we spent quite a bit of time during those two weeks, uh, you know, um, at the end of March, um, working on kind of systems and kind of how we were going to, uh, what we were going to do to, to get ready. So we're going to have patients. Um, we've closed kind of a reception area. We're going to have patients wait in the cars. Um, they'll and we practice this, for, you know, for for the few days that we were open. Um, but the uh, patients will, when they get to our office, they'll text us. Um, we have a used rhinogram, so they can text us uh, on our office number. Let us know they're there. We'll check them in mobily. We'll ask them a series of questions, and then we will text them that we're ready for them to come in. And when they come into the office, um, in in our reception area, we have a staging area. We'll take their temperature, um, record that, and um, have them send them to what was formerly the toothbrushing station, have them rinse with peroxyl for 60 seconds and, and wash their hands for 20 seconds, have a seat in their chair. Uh, we will, uh, in my treatment bay area, it's an open bay design. Um, we have three chairs on one side of an island, three chairs on the other side of the island. And uh, we're gonna keep the center chair um, open so that there's about 14 feet between patients and uh, I'm having some dividers made. Um, uh, there's a company called Freeform. We're, we're looking to have some dividers made so that we can um, start using those center chairs again um, more comfortably. And, and um, we do have a private treatment room in the back. So we'll, we'll be able to run five chairs and the, the chair that the private room in the back will use, we'll use that for all of our older patients, some ones that may have, uh, you know, be at higher risk. And um, we've, you know, obviously there's a, a, you know, if we follow universal precautions um, like we're supposed to be doing, uh, the, the risk should be lower, but we're gonna be wearing face shields. Um, we have level two, three mask, uh, which filter 98%. We, we will have N95 mask. I, I plan on wearing a level two or three with a face shield. 
Um, we will use HVEs when we do um, any composite removal. Um, we don't use air water. We have high speeds, so airless high speeds. Um, we don't use water when we, we use hand pieces. Most of our composite removal is done with a slow speed. Uh, with that, with an HVE, uh, we should be good. Um, we've ordered, uh, there's a product uh, called Newbird. It's an uh, HV mirror, uh, autoclavable mirror, which will allow you know, an assistant to have an HV and a handpiece kind of, they can, in our state, they can use slow speeds. Um, <clears throat> but um, we've, there are some obvious visible changes um, that we've done kind of that patients will see. And then we've lightened our schedule to give uh, uh, our chair sides more time to disinfect between patients. Also, patients are not waiting kind of on a deck, in an on deck area like they had been in the past. So we'll have to have a little bit more time to get them to come into the office. Um, and we do have um, some additional staff that will be helping with disinfection, uh, pro you know, uh, the process. Okay. Well, in the profile of you and your practice, uh, we focused on how you are using 3D printing in your office, spe specifically how you have ramped up your production of in-office aligners in the last year. Why did you feel this was the right move for your practice? Well, uh, it was a transition. I mean, it was a, an evolution, I would say. Um, yeah, I started using liners back in 2000. And, you know, um, when Invisalign first came out and, you know, you treat a few patients and you get frustrated that you're not getting the same kind of quality that you're, you're used to. So I, I felt for the longest time that I could do a much better job with fixed appliances. And then you get that case that you're like, wow, I didn't think that I could do that with aligners. So you're, you're kind of forced into you know, corner and, you know, patient really wants aligners. That's the only way they're going to allow you to treat them. And then you realize, wow, I can do more with this. Maybe it's more to do with how I'm using aligners instead of the aligners themselves. And so understanding, I kind of focus my time on trying to understand the mechanics of aligners and how to use aligners, how to stage aligners, uh, attachments and, and those sort of things. And, and, um, and so with that said, um, I also realize that there's uh, some efficiencies in using aligners. Um, and it, you know, quite often people will say, well, wow, I can, I can treat a patient, you know, much more cost effective with fixed appliances at just a few hundred dollars versus a couple thousand dollars, you know, upfront cost. And my staff is kind of sitting around anyway. Well, I can cut my appointment time. I mean, I can cut my visits in roughly in half. Um, when I treat aligner patients, I can schedule those out over a longer period of time. I don't have to deal with emergency appointments like I do with FIX. Um, the uh, decalcification issues that I've struggled with over the years are almost non-existent. Mm -hmm. um, so, and I find that quite it, it is uh, quite a few people are more accepting of that type of treatment. Uh, most adults do not want fixed appliances, and <clears throat> given the fact that I've been using aligners. <clears throat> in our area for a while, but, you know, children are asking for it now, so, excuse me, um, so it, it is uh, become more accepted, uh, and, and, and I feel that it's a more efficient use of my chair side time, so I can spend 15, 20 minutes um, treatment planning a case, and, and that will get me through months and months of treatment. Um, where, you know, I, I don't really have to do much in the chair side time, which is so valuable. Okay. Um, you currently use 365 printings and Vision One printers. What were you looking for in a printer that made this the right one for you? Well, I, I started um, several years ago uh, with a less expensive printer. Um, mm -hmm. and, and I think a lot of people kind of think that way. Wow. I'm really not sure how this is going to go, and I, I don't want to spend a lot of money. Kind of, you know, let's just get an inexpensive one and try to figure it out. And 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 that's not necessarily a bad thought process. But the the truth of the matter is, is that you're going to have to spend twice. <laughs> you know, so if you look and say, I'm going to make this change. If you invest in a quality printer, it's going to save you time and money in the long run. Um, the um, you know, we learned with a, a, a less expensive printer um, that was very slow, um, but we had to figure it all out on our own. And we ran into issues. You turn to forums and, and talk with people about why you're having issues. And with um, 
with J at 365, uh, there is a, a, a comfort level that comes with that. You've got some, you've got someone in your corner that will help you through the process. So if you're running into an issue, if something's not working properly, you've got an expert that can help you sort it out. If, if he can't get it taken care of on the phone, he'll come to your office. So you get in office support and um, he's, he's been known to use, give you loaner printers or print models for you if you're in a pinch. So it gives you the comfort level of knowing that it, you're going to be depending on this process and that you've got some, you've got a safety net there. And so that is uh, one of the more important things for me. And also, it, you know, when you start looking at printers, there's a reason why there's a price point difference between printers. Mm -hmm. Like cars, there's price point difference in cars. It's not the little bags that you stick on the, the car that makes the difference. It's the components, you know. Um, and so with printers, you've got components and you can have higher level or lower level quality components that will determine a price point. But um, and then Vision One, the projector in that is a high quality projector. Um, and moving forward, um, as I get into indirect bonding and printing more clear resins, that projector will lend itself to, um, to, to doing that better than some of the less expensive printers. It has a, a glass lens instead of a plastic lens. Um, the uh, vertical arm um, that you know, uh, erases the bill plate as you're, you're printing vertically, um, you know, the Z-axis is more stable, the, the type worm drive and the guide system that they have on that. But it is, uh, it, it's, it's it's more of a commercial type printer, uh, and so the quality and the speed is what drew me to, to that printer. Um, and this will be uh, I've purchased four printers, um, and and I've sold two of those, and I have two identical printers now. And and what I would uh, what I would say to those who are looking to get into this, it is much more efficient to have two identical printers than it is to have two different type printers because <clears throat> typically when you build a job to send to a printer you sit down and you do your computer time and you build multiple jobs and um and then you can if you have two identical printers you can just send it to whichever printer is open they have the same software they're set up the same build plate if you have two different printers um you have to build them in different um in different softwares and they have different build plates, they're not compatible with each other. So you have to wait for that particular printer to open up. Um, and, and I believe it's important to have redundancy. And so eventually you're gonna want, you know, a second printer um, and, and having that ability to print something quickly is really about having, uh, not maxing out the capacity of a printer, having available print time uh, so if you need to do a same day uh, line or retainer, uh, you're not you're 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 not tied. Your printer's not tied up, and you, and and you have the ability to do that. Now, for your aligner treatment planning, you use U Labs aligner planning software. What features of this software made it right for you? Well, um, a couple of years ago at the DC, uh, the AO in in, in Washington, uh, I I went there strictly for the purpose of you know, adding this piece to my practice. And I had already used uh, a software, uh, you know, kind of DIY uh, liner software. And I had some experience with that. And and, um, and when I went to uh, DC, I went and demoed every software that was available. Uh, I was really drawn to ULAB as far as um, its simplicity. Uh, it was very intuitive. It did, it did not, was not a complicated kind of process. Um, they had a lot of automation kind of built into it. Um, the software I'd used before, you could separate the teeth from the gums. And some of those you have to send them off and they separate them, send them back to you. So it takes days before you can actually start your tooth movement. Um, with you lab, you clicked on the tooth and it, and it, it knew by, um, it, it knew what was a tooth and what was a gum. And the, it had auto alignment features, and although that wasn't where it needed to be yet, um, there was, I, I could see kind of the direction they were going. Um, so I was drawn to that. Um, having used the software, um, the, the, the real um, nugget there is the people behind ULAB. And they um, are very receptive to uh, input from the orthodontist user platform. 
they've evolved, that software has evolved so much since the, the first version that I used. Uh, mm -hmm. It's incredible. Um, they, but there's a lot of automation built into it. You can, um, it, it automates your tooth segmentation. You can start moving teeth within a few minutes. Um, the auto, automated alignment, and that is improving significantly. I, um, automated print, go build your print job so it will um, set your, uh, your, your models on the build plate um, so that you can send those. So there's a lot of time saving features kind of built into that. They have a machine called a U contour machine, um, and I've had one of those for, for quite a while, um, that will trim out your aligner for you. So all you have to do is kind of buff the edges. Um, and that is huge. Um, so the, the, you can trim those by hand, um, but if you're doing 100 of those a day, it's not comfortable to trim out that many aligners. And, um, and there's not consistency between your aligners. Um, or between staff, people trimming aligners. Yeah. And so um, with a Yukon tool machine, um, that's something kind of exclusive to them. I've not seen another company that, that has that kind of technology um, other than say, you know, the manufacturers like Invisalign and all that use. Right. Like um, the, uh, but the automation it's built in um, is, was one of the things that kind of drew me to, to uh, ULab. Now knowing what's coming um, in the future, uh, I'm really excited about the retouch feature. I've used it some kind of in the, you know, um, behind the scenes, there's, there's a way to access it. But, but they, that has been evolving. And what it will do for you is typically for me, it takes several sets of aligners to get where I want to be. Um, right. Doesn't matter kind of what company you use to do that. Uh, you don't get 100% out of your movement that you build with aligners. You have to over correct. things um, but there's uh, in you typically would have to do if you do say three of aligners you have to do three setups um, and that's what I've been doing kind of in the past well in the future you'll be able to do your initial setup and then when you scan that patient in you can scan it in as a retouch it will look at your current uh, uh, STL file and marry it with your original setup and then determine how many stages it takes to get you from where you currently are to your your initial um, setup, and then you can make adjustments from there. So it will be a huge time saver making doing um, multiple sets of aligners moving forward. So they've got um, they've got a lot of things in the pipeline, but that company is um, um, you know having worked with different companies in the past, I've been really impressed. And um, I you know full disclosure, I did invest in uh, ULab uh, recently, so uh, not a Initially, I used it for about a year, and I basically begged them. <laughs> I mean, I, I've used a lot of companies over the years. This is the only yeah. company I've looked and said, "Wow, you know, I'm, I'm sure I've invested in, um, you know, 3M and other things through my 401k, but I've not specifically directed money towards any of those investments." Um, but in this particular one, I, you know, I, I truly believe in kind of what they're doing. So, um, okay. that right. great. Well, what's your advice to colleagues who are wary of getting into 3D printing or in office aligners? Well, I would say that, um, you know, everybody's kind of on a different continuum and they will come to make decisions kind of at their own time. And I would say that if you look at just our current situation with this pandemic, um, I can tell you that uh, I started my con Currently, it used to be that the liners were a very small part of my practice. Now, about 50% of my starts are aligner starts. Um, and I do finish quite a few fixed cases with aligners. Um, having been able to manufacture those in house, that becomes an affordable option because your cost to manufacture aligners is directly related to how many aligners you make. And it cost me $12 an aligner to make, includes labor and everything. So the um so at the end of the day if i were to make 10 upper and 10 lower liners it cost me um 240 dollars to do that and i and it allows me to spread appointments out so i can save um you know time appointments in your office and if you get to the point to where um cheer side is time that's valuable to you uh, you know studies are you know a little few, over 200 dollars for every time somebody sits in your chair so when you use aligners you can cut down on the number of visits in in your office but 
you'll make those decisions um, based off of kind of your experience. But this pandemic is, uh, I've had much less stress <clears throat> with my aligner patients than I've had with my fixed patients. Um, right. We'll have to worry about emergencies. If they have to pause, you know, because we can spread their treatment times, uh, appointments out over a longer point of time, we could print the aligners, they could just pick them up. The, um, you know, we've been able to keep those people on track and we've not had to worry about things getting off track, um, you know, it, with emergency appointments or broken things that patients didn't know were broken, you know. So it, it is, you know, aligners, I believe, are going to be a more efficient use of our time. Um, and, and, you know, but there is a learning curve there. Um, you have to, you know, a, a lot of the effectiveness comes from learning how to use and stage aligners. Um, but but I think, you know, moving forward, I think a lot of people probably will be moving in that direction. Yeah. So. What about in terms of uh, buying a 3D printer? Um, you know, a lot of people are scared off by the cost or just, you know, taking it on. What is your advice to them there? Well, I, you know, I started with an inexpensive printer. Uh, and I think a lot of people kind of think that way. Um, and I did not want to stress out. Um, that was several years ago. So. I think three years ago, we bought a printer. We played with that for quite a while. And then when I got to the point where I had done some in-house in aligners, I realized that the printer that I had was not going to be efficient use of our time to, 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 to that end. Um, it took too long to print. Um, it was, uh, we had to do a lot of figuring things out because it was as predictable as as I wanted it to be. Mm -hmm. So um, I started looking at more commercial printers, ones that were more expensive, um, but you know, more accurate, more stable. Um, and um, Jay at 365 Printing, uh, you know, I, I knew him through a study group. Um, he he would come to our study group, and I'd seen his printer for a while, and I didn't want to invest that kind of money at first until I really realized that, you know, by manufacturing liners in house, I could create another revenue stream. I could save money. I could be more profitable by doing that. And yes, it does require an upfront investment. Um, but having used a less expensive printer and then using a printer that's more commercial in nature, um, I, my recommendation would be if you're going to make that jump, get a quality printer out of the gate. Um, I think it will save you time and money. I've had four printers to date, um, two of them that I've sold, uh, and I have two identical printers now, the two Envision ones. It's a it's a, a very fast, accurate, stable printer, and 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 if you buy one of those through Jay, uh, it, it comes with in office support, um, but it's a huge safety net if you're making this leap and you're going to start depending on your lab to produce these things. Uh, you don't want to have to try to figure all this out. And so the beauty of having someone like Jay is that um, you can pick up the phone and call him and, and he will help walk you through what your issues are. Uh, he can dial into the printer. He can Zoom with you. He can, uh, if he can't answer it that way, he will come to your office. Um, I've known people that he has given loaner printers to to get them kind of you know, get their printer taken care of. He'll bring components and fix your printer in your office. He will, um, you know, it, it, if he can't get you a loaner, he'll print models for you. Um, mm -hmm. So it is, it's a, a great resource to have. Um, and, um, and, and, I, and, and that safety net for me was huge. Okay. Um, with the cost, you know, a lot of people are scared off by the expense. Um, how would you tell them to manage that fear? Okay. Well, you know, obviously we make decisions in our practice, um, you know, for cost and quality all the time. Um, and, and I would say, you know, one of the things, you know, um, that, that all orthodontists use, we all use pliers and, and everyone is held an inexpensive or had an inexpensive set of pliers in their setup where the joint that, you know, the joint doesn't move smoothly or the metal on the end of the bird beak bends, uh, you know, the prior, you know, the cutters don't stay sharp. And we've all used those inexpensive pliers and we've all had, you know, those nice quality pliers. 
that we've used and that held up and, and lasted the test of time. And I, and, and I would say that, you know, when you start looking at buying a, a bunch of pliers, yes, you have to make that decision. Am I, I going to invest in the quality plier that's going to make my life easier and I'm not going to have to replace or repair um, or get carpal tunnel trying to open and cl close the pliers? Um, <laughs> You know, we've all made those decisions. Um, and I would say the same thing kind of goes with the 3D printer. It's a mechanical device. It has components in it. Just like a car, they're more expensive cars. It's not the badge that's on the front of the car that makes it more expensive. There, there are decisions that go into manufacturing the printers. Um, and the components that go into those um, printers really kind of determine the price point. So when you're looking at something like that in Vision One, the projector in it is a different projector. And so moving forward, starting thinking about printing clear materials, that projector is going to do a much better job moving into the future if I get into indirect bonding and that sort of thing than, say, some of the other printers. It has a glass lens and not a plastic lens like some of the less expensive printers. Uh, the 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 um, the the arm that holds the base plate. Uh, the, as, as you're printing vertically, uh, the worm drive that's in that, the braces that hold it are more stable. I mean, there's just a lot of things that kind of go into that. And then Vision One uses an oxygen inhibitor layer, so it reduces the peel effect. So it's supposed to be more stable when printing in a vertical mm -hmm. um, orientation, which is how I typically print um, uh, than, say, some other uh, printers. It is... Um, it's very fast. Um, so if you were to print uh, horizontally, you can print um, six to eight models in about 15 minutes. And I can print, you know, 18 to 20 vertically in, in, in an hour, which is, is great as far as workflow goes, because, you know, we probably produce uh, 100 a day. And so when we start um, thinking about staff time, if she can sit and do her job, and have 20 of those pop up in an hour and she can do something else for that hour while these are printing. She's not going back to that printer every 15 minutes trying to load a new job, trying to take the models off the printer. If you print them vertically, she can just reach up and pop the models off of the build plate without even taking the build plate off. And printing vertically, we can um, print those hollow so it takes less resin. But um, when you start looking at, at printers, um, the resin, the chemistry matters. And when you start talking about accuracy, the the accuracy of a printer and accuracy and, uh, and resolution are not the same thing. But as you print, um, as you print, it it prints layers and it goes vertically. And and the accuracy is kind of determined how you're taking this liquid resin and you're 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 turning it into a solid form, and it has to support other layers. So how fast it can cure that um, that layer to move to the next one, um, and and what type of of, of uh, surface tension there is, all that kind of matters. Um, and so chemistry and the resin, the, the mechanics of the, the, the piece of equipment make a difference um, and will matter kind of those, you know, the, the Vitas, uh, and I had a Vita, uh, which I sold um, just recently. It was a great printer. Those things have been in the field for, you know, five years and, mm -hmm. and solid workhorses. So the Envision One uh, has only been around for a year or so. Um, right. but I expect kind of similar type things out of it, but it is, you know, very fast accurate. It's a little bit different technology than you know the DLP printers. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, you talked a little bit about this, about how being able to do in-office aligners is going to help you moving forward. But a lot of practice uh, practices are thinking about what about the next couple months, about the next year with the pandemic. Do you think 3D printing is going to help you in any way going forward beyond those in-house aligners? Absolutely. I mean, I, I, the truth of the matter is, is that if you can, if you want to be more profitable, um, if you can reduce the number of visits in your office in the chair side time, that will increase your profitability. And if you can reduce your lab bill, that will increase your profitability. Now, there are Plenty of times, and I, I do as much Invisalign now as I did prior to doing in-house aligners. So mm -hmm. my um, my number of my my number of aligner cases percentage-wise to fix is significantly higher than it used to be. Um, 
my number of aligner cases, I, I do as much, if not a, a bit more, say with Invisalign. I don't do every case in-house. It makes sense to send some out. My cost to manufacture those in-house is directly related to the number of aligners that I manufacture. Right. Um, so, you know, for me, there's times where the, you know, the lab bill's worth sending it out. Or if I have a case that I, I feel is going to be unpredictable, say if I have a tongue open bite with a tongue thrust, I'm not going to do that in house. I'm going to send it out. Not that I couldn't, but that lab bill, because of my unpredictability, how many aligners is going to take me to finish this case, it makes more sense to send that out and have one just fixed cost. But a lot of people, you know, I still do quite a bit of fixed cases. And sometimes I'll start a patient with fixed and finish them with aligners. And, and that's affordable to do um, because my aligner bill is totally related to the number of aligners I make. Um, but there's certain things that are easier to do with fix than they are with aligners. There's certain patients that aren't going to wear the aligners like you need them to. Um, so there's reasons, um, you know, why you need to be able to do both. But there's an argument um, out there that, you know, it costs less to treat a patient with braces. And that's really not true. Your initial costs are less. Your material costs are less. But your labor costs are much higher. It, there is a true cost when a patient sits in your chair in your office. And so, right. you know, moving forward, I, I think that um, aligners are more efficient. And, and if I can um, cut my lab bill down, um, then, you know, it's a double whammy. Um, I'm going to be saving chair time as well as lab costs. Okay. So I, I totally see the, me doing more of that in the future. Okay. Well, I think this has all been really helpful for our audience. So I thank you for joining me today, Dr. McGinnis. Thanks for having me. I hope Great. that helped. Okay. Great. Well, and if you'd like to learn more about Dr. McGinnis and his practice, I invite you to check out our profile of him on Orthodontic Products Online and in our April-May issue on the cover. And I remind you to check out Orthodontic Products Online again for the latest orthodontic industry news. And until next time, thank you and stay safe.